Trevilian Next is hosted by the Trevilian Group. Please visit www.trevilliangroup.com to learn more about our specialty in the placement of board members, C-level executives, and other professionals within community banks and credit unions. Welcome everybody. Um, very happy to have uh, a face you definitely know from our previous uh, podcasts and webinars. We have uh, Patrick Sells, who is now at NIDIG, Head of Bank Solutions. And we also have the president of NIDIG, Yen Zhao. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Patrick, a lot has happened since uh, our last uh, podcast, webcast together in 2020. So, um, what is Bitcoin and what's happening with Bitcoin? And yeah, tell me about your move to, uh, to NIDIG from Quantic. Those are uh, some big questions, but uh, <laughs> good, good to be back, Keith. Thanks for having <laughs> us on. Um, you're right. So I, I moved over from Quantic to NIDIG. I'm head of bank solutions here, which means I'm really working with banks and credit unions, fintechs to allow them to have Bitcoin enabled products inside you know their mobile apps and online banking things like buy sell hold or a credit card that pays bitcoin rewards mm -hmm. and uh you know you asked a kind of an important question there what is bitcoin <laughs> and, just the basic <laughs> question yeah, just the basic one uh, <laughs> yeah. it's a really good book you and i've uh, talked some about the bitcoin yep. standard but mm -hmm. uh, won't try to attempt to answer all of that that today but i do think it's helpful when how to think about bitcoin is it really is a store of value, right? I think there's a lot of conversations around it being used as a form of payment or currency. And that's interesting and may happen, may not. I think though, we clearly can see that Bitcoin can be a store of value. And if you think about that as a form of money, you know, there's some key characteristics such as like how hard or soft it is, right? And in other words, how easy is the supply grown? because that's really what will let you know, like the money I have today will hold its value tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so with Bitcoin, there can only ever be 21 million of them. So you have like this finite you know, supply, maybe for the first time ever. Whereas like, let's compare that to the US dollar. It's kind of a startling stat of all the dollars ever in existence, 35% have been printed since March of 2020, right? Oh. Like, <laughs> what does that mean? That's pretty amazing. <laughs> and what does that mean for the dollar I have today, right? So money is something that I am willing to go work for and trade that work, kind of my life energy for something that I can use down the road. I think that's where Bitcoin's very unique. And what we're trying to do is make it accessible for people through uh, their trusted financial institutions. No, that's great. And uh, you've thrown out some stats I've heard, you know, 46 million, I think Americans have Bitcoin. At some yeah. point, I don't even know where to go to get it personally. So <laughs> that's why I'm looking to solutions like you uh, and NIDIG. And uh, yeah, um, can you explain NIDIG uh, for uh, people out there who might not know exactly what you guys do? Yeah, of course. Um, so let me just start uh, a little bit before the founding of NIDIG to the founding of our parent company, which is a company called Stone Ridge Holdings Group. Uh, one of the co-founders, uh, we started in 2012. And, and the reason it's relevant is I think the, the mission of Stone Ridge really carries through to the mission of NIDIG. So the mission of Stone Ridge is really uh, financial security for all. Um, we started uh, with our awesome management uh, group which really provided access to alternative asset classes like reinsurance or, or alternative lending in 40 act funds for the first time ever. So these are asset classes that we think are fantastic for everybody to own, but before us, it was really only available through, to ultra high net worth people or institutions in private funds. And we made it much more accessible and uh, through a structure that people knew how to use. And so um, it immediately and significantly expanded the number of people who can invest in these asset classes. And you'll hear sort of a, a, a resonance with, with um, what we do in, in NIDIG as well. Um, you know, for Bitcoin, it's actually always been an interest of ours, uh, but at the time in sort of 2015, 16, 17, launching a fund for Bitcoin was, was sort of off the table, um, but we wanted to put some of our own 
corporate treasury balance sheet into Bitcoin, put our money where our mouth is, uh, so to speak. And, you know, we actually looked around the market for people who can help us buy that Bitcoin securely, store that Bitcoin securely, and have that kind of level of regulatory and audit uh, standards that we needed as a financial services firm. And we just couldn't find anyone. And um, just sort of an indication of the type of firm that we are, instead of saying, well, I guess we, we can't do it. Uh, we decided, you know what, we believe strongly in this. And so we're going to build the services ourselves and we'll use it ourselves, um, but we'll also make it available to other institutions who have probably a lot of the same issues that we have of really needing that high level of, of um, regulatory compliance audit standards. And so that was really the genesis of NIDIG in 2017 or so. Um, you know, obviously over the ensuing couple of years, it was quote unquote, the crypto winter. Um, mm -hmm. But we just quietly behind the scenes built the technology with the firm belief that there will come a time when the institutional market and the broader market would be interested in Bitcoin. And so um, over the past year, especially with the government printing money the way Patrick Patrick talked about, um, and, and really Bitcoin becoming increasingly a, a, an institutional um, product, um, we have started really, really growing our business. Um, right now we have sort of three main businesses. Uh, the first is called Market Solutions, which facilitates trading, financing, hedging for us and others. Um, investor Solutions, which really helps institutional investors buy Bitcoin directly or via funds and just have all that custody and execution security. And then the last is Platform Solutions, um, which uh, uh, Patrick um, is, is a crucial part of, which really provides these white label integrations to financial services and other partners. Um, and the goal, again, is to make it really easy to, to, to um, access Bitcoin. I'm um, just speaking for myself, you know, I, I'm not that classic technology super early adopter and not, I, I wasn't one of those who bought Bitcoin 10 <laughs> years ago and, and you know, have, have all of that. I'm sort of solidly the third generation of iPhone user, not the first generation of iPhone yeah. user. And so um, I, I'm very sympathetic to you and, and, and uh, lots of other folks who say, you know, I think this Bitcoin thing is interesting. I just don't know how to get it. I don't really have time mm -hmm. to research all the different options. Even if I do, like, are they secure? Do I trust mm -hmm. them? But if I can just go to my bank that I have all my money with and just get Bitcoin that way, or I can yeah. earn it passively through swiping card, fantastic. So, so we're so excited about this, um, this business. No, that's fantastic. And yeah, over the last, I feel like Bitcoin's in the news almost daily now. Yeah. And you said the winter, you're definitely moved into the spring of uh, Bitcoin and with everything that's happening now, the summer is, is coming quickly yeah. too, I yeah. think. So Patrick, uh, Bitcoin and banking, because we, we both have a you know, passion for you know, community banks, uh, smaller banks. Um, how does this work? How does Bitcoin and banking work in your view? And what's happening with you know, companies like Square and PayPal and other companies in that space? Yeah, uh, you know, you've hit on something, Keith, that I think has been one of the, the genesis is for our friendship and relationship, and that's a passion for community banks, right? I think uh, really love that in the industry and the sector. Um, and I think what's really cool about this is that crypto or in Bitcoin is this new thing. It's as new as you can get, right, on like this thing in terms of like thinking of fintechs or whatever. But uh, consumers want their banks to be their go to source. Right. I think it was easy as a banker to feel like we were kind of like the you have to have me choice. Right. And now it's like, no, we want to. Right. When we look across all of America, we see that about 20 percent of American adults own Bitcoin and 80 percent of them want to store it at their bank. Eighty five percent want to buy it through their bank. And that's amazing. And I think not only the research, but you see that in like market data. Right. We look at PayPal, over 17 percent of their U.S. users bought Bitcoin from them in the first month. So then the question goes, OK, so how do we do this as a bank? And that's where, you know, what we try to do at NYDIG in particular is make it easy and in a way that's within the, the regulation framework, if you will. So the bank is a bank. It's always operates in U.S. dollars and stays that way, right? They have the relationship with the customers and what they need is APIs to tell us what to do, right? Mm -hmm. And we make that really easy to integrate with them. 
and the Bitcoin never touches the bank balance sheet. And so it's very easy to do. It's stored and cold storage with us. It's offline. It can't be hacked. And then for the bank, it represents a really tremendous opportunity to earn non-interest income, which is something mm-hmm. that every banker uh, is looking to go do, right? And so in many ways, it's not that much different for a bank than integrating with another fintech where you know something's happening behind the scenes, right? That's kind of how we're set up to make this work and in a way that is compliant and very easy and good business for the bank. Yeah, it's another uh, offering for right. the bank. Uh, and you said, I think 80% would want to get Bitcoin through their bank. So it just, it's another product, it's another offering. I think that's fantastic. Uh, now, uh, again, um, getting to the talent aspect, which is yeah. you know, dear to my heart uh, mm-hmm. and Trillion, of course. Um, why, what, is, what type of talent is going to be needed at NYDIG uh, with the Bitcoin revolution, uh, the foundation, what type of talent do you think is going to be required at NYDIG now and in the future and uh, to fit in with your culture also? Because Patrick yeah. and I are definitely big on culture and we talk about it often. Yeah. Um, I know you guys have a special uh, a special culture too there. Yeah, that's a great one. We, we spend a lot of time um, and, and focus on culture. So um, I'll start with our, our firm principles, which I think really illustrates our culture, the principles are be humble, be kind, and focus. I think for a lot of people, they've, they've told me that financial services companies often don't have those, those types of principles, but we really hold them dear. Um, be humble, be kind. We really come, we expect people to come to work with that white belt mentality that they can always learn um, from others, that they can always be better at what they what they do, um, even if they are experts and they're fantastic. And no matter the level of seniority, um, there's always more that you can you can do. And be humble about asking for help, receiving help, helping others. Um, being kind is completely also non-negotiable. Um, we uh, we really really uh, adhere to the. Uh, the thesis that we we don't have any brilliant jerks. We don't want to hire brilliant jerks. Um, and that to us is very important because we think we, we want people to come to work and like working with each other. Uh, mm-hmm. And so I think that's also non-negotiable. And focus is really about, we're always going to have a lot of things happening. And that doesn't mean that you're not going to be working on many, many things, but um, really focusing on what is the big picture? What is the firm's mission? And um, being able to dive deep into problems and not just be superficial about problems. Uh, the other sort of... Um, thing that, that, that Ross, our, our chairman and CEO talks about is, um, you know, we sort of uh, are proud that we have uncorrelated weirdness. So nice. it's, it's, a, it's a way of expressing like everybody is different and unique and individual and have um, something that is weird about them. Our, our yeah. CEO in, our, in a very public letter was like, hey, I was you know, a, a varsity bowling guy. And, you know, I, I, I was a gigantic nerd in high school and, and all of these things. But, you know, we embrace that individuality and that weirdness. And we think that all of this is, is fantastic for creating a, a culture of acceptance and, and just awesome and a diversity of ideas. And finally, it's really about um, finding people who are just passionate, creative, um, hardworking, who are excited to work in a fast paced dynamic environment. Um, and really, because of sort of our, our growth in, um, in this, this next year and, and beyond, you know, we're, we're sort of hiring across the board, uh, you know, engineers, product managers, salespeople, ops people, recruiting, legal. But really, I think for all of it, it comes back to that culture fit as well. Yeah. Uncorrelated weirdness. I like that. <laughs> yep. I'm, obviously, Keith, you can see the culture is uh, unique and something that was very attractive to me. I think one of the kind of the misnomers and at least definitely something that resonated with me was like, wow, Bitcoin and crypto sounds really cool. And like, I can see like lots of things are happening. Like you said, it's talked about every day, but like, I don't know how to code in the blockchain. Like I couldn't go work at a company like that. Truth is, I don't know how to work the blockchain right? Like much of what we're doing is what people every day in banks and fintechs are solving problems for. Like, Mm -hmm. guess what? We have a core that we use just like, and it's one of the core providers that many banks use. We have Mm -hmm. compliance people that do the same things we did in banks, KYC, AML. 
we have technology people. So, you know, I think that's what for many people where it's so exciting is in many ways, it's a nascent industry, but we're exploding growth. You know, we'll probably 10 X our headcount this year and it is in every position. And it's really for people in the industry, almost regardless of where you've been at a bank or a FinTech, but you're wanting to be a part of this, like, you know, exciting intersection, this explosion of FinTech, Bitcoin and banking, but you don't really need to know how to do the Bitcoin stuff, right? <laughs> like, we're a financial services company. Yeah. So you don't have to be able to build blockchain and do what that I, Satoshi I, guy did back in 2008. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Yin or I either I, could. I, could no, I'm, no, definitely not. Uh, I think we lost her there, um, but uh, now she's back. <laughs> um, no, so yeah. any, any parting thoughts here, you know, next steps, say you're anybody from a traditional Community bank, you know, smaller community bank who may watch this up to an uh, innovative bank. We have clients across the board. Um, next steps for them. Uh, well, what would be step one, kind of just to learn about NIDIG or Bitcoin, uh, reach out to you? What's kind of the best next step for anybody across that spectrum? Yeah. I, three pieces of advice kind of in different ways. One, if you're interested in understanding Bitcoin, really the best book is called the Bitcoin standard. Like I read it with my parents over Thanksgiving. It's just really helpful. The second thing is uh, what has been fun for me coming from the world of community banking is I've had a lot of community bankers reach out about a job. Like, um, and so I think if you're interested in learning and being a part of this world, like you can pretty fearlessly step forward. If the culture resonates with you and the story of growth and everything. And then I think, Thirdly would be there are, and this is what's also been fun. I've been able to talk to over a hundred banks already that like want to do something with Bitcoin and banking. And so if you're innovative or you're interested in this, it's either like, Hey, let's work together at your bank or let's come work together for someone else's bank. You know, yeah. You go read the Bitcoin standard. I don't know you anything you'd add to that. <laughs> I started that actually. I'm finishing the, uh, the book on the uh, Winkle Boss twins and how they got into Bitcoin a long time ago. Uh, that's an interesting story. Um, yeah. And for you, uh, again, uh, what what kind of would be your uh, advice to anybody on this spectrum from you know somebody like me who understands a little to somebody who understands a ton to somebody who doesn't understand anything about Bitcoin? Yeah, I, you know, I would say um, I'm definitely more on the spectrum of uh, sort of not not that early adopter, not the um, mm -hmm. Bitcoin maximalist forever, um, but. I think from my personal experience, things have changed a lot over the past few years and people who haven't really spent a lot of time in the industry recently uh, may have impressions of, of what Bitcoin is like from news three, five, seven years ago. Um, and that's just very, very much out of date at this point. It's such a fast moving market. At this point, the market is so much more mature. There are so many more um, real professional institutional players and investors. Mm -hmm. um, and there's so many um, really compelling arguments that are not just sort of libertarian distributed money and like nobody can ever you know see my money movement it, it really is a, um, a a different value proposition i think when you think about their digital gold when you think about inflation hedging when you think about um the uses of of a product like that um so i, I would encourage um, reading about it or reaching out to uh, me or patrick via linkedin um mm -hmm. patrick via twitter uh anything and and we're happy to share some pieces because i think it's you know, first step is just learning more about what's happening right now. No, great answer. Great answer. And I think definitely in the last six to mo 12 months, as you said, it's become more mature. Uh, it just feels like it's an additional product for your portfolio. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of big time investors and institutional investors are getting involved. But excited to see, uh, you know, Patrick, you know, at such a fantastic firm. And I look forward to uh, being a partner of yours as you continue to grow. And uh, hopefully we'll have another chat soon awesome. when it's warmer and uh, from the beach. I got the mountains behind me right now. There you go. Thank you so Looking much. Looking forward to the beach. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.